There's a freaky ass orgy taking place, and Tom Cruise isn't invited. But damn it, he's going to try and sneak in anyway, where he bears witness to some truly freaky deaky going ons, and finds himself in the middle of a scandal among the powerful elite, as he catches a glimpse into their secret society. Released in 1999, and famous for being the last movie directed by Stanley Kubrick, this controversial movie tells the story of mild-mannered Dr. Bill Harford, who one night after his erratic wife Alice, played by Nicole Kidman, tells him of previously having lustful thoughts of having an affair, Bill decides to go on his own escapades of lust, where, in all honesty, nothing really happens. Just lots of awkward walking around and talking. <laughs> Seriously, this guy's love life is about as exciting as filing out your taxes. Until Bill finds a masked bull, and and cons his way in there, where he bears witness to many strange happenings of what goes on behind the closed doors of powerful secret societies. May I have the password of the house, please? Because here, it doesn't even matter if you never even knew it. <laughs> yes, I am evil British voice guy. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's me, Minty. And I can remember Eyes Wide Shut when it came out all the way back in 1999. I was there. And literally all the other teenagers wanted to go and see it, all of them. Not because it was Kubrick's last film, or because it was a unique and surreal work of art, with wonderful directing and drama. Nope. Because it had boobs. Yep, lots and lots of boobs. So let's look into 10 things that you didn't know about Eyes Wide Shut. The movie that has that really weird music that sounds like this. <laughs> Hey, I did that pretty good. So let's check it out. Number 10, based on a novella. Eyes Wide Shut is indeed based on a 1926 German novella called Dream Story. It was written by Austrian author Arthur Schnitzler. The story is set in Vienna during the turn of the century and has a similar structure to Eyes Wide Shut in that it focuses on a successful doctor, this time called Fridolin, whom after his wife reveals that she's had lustful thoughts over another man, he goes on a surreal journey which leads to the masked ball, which puts Fridolin in danger as he is an outsider. The story was originally published as segments in a magazine and has since gone on to be regarded as a classic psychological story which explores lust, desire, and the strange possibility of what might go on behind the closed doors of the elite and powerful. Number 9, Eyes Wide Shut is the fourth dream story adaptation. Before we got to Stanley Kubrick's 1999 Eyes Wide Shut, the Dream Story novella already had several adaptations. The first was an Austrian TV movie called Trom Novelle, which was broadcast in 1969, with the movie settings being more in line with the original story. Trom Novelle had become something of a piece of lost or forgotten media, but it has started to circulate more and more on social media over the last few years. I didn't even know about this movie's existence till watching a YouTube video called Eyes Wide Shut, the version you've never seen, by a channel called Meta Cinema. So if you want to learn more about Trom Neville, I recommend that video. Then in 1983, there was an Italian movie based on the story, and finding information on this version was really scarce. And then finally in 1989, there was another Italian movie called Nightmare in Venice, making it sound more like a horror movie. Although some sources claim the movie was actually called A Step Away From Dawn. Once again, I couldn't find out too much information about this one, other than it apparently was filmed on a very low budget. So with all these different versions of Dream Story, 
It was only a matter of time until Hollywood would come a-knocking. Number 8. Kubrick originally envisioned Eyes Wide Shut as an oddball comedy. <laughs> and yes, by the boldness of my head, I'm not kidding. Eyes Wide Shut went into production all the way back in 1968, 31 years before its initial release. Kubrick had just made 2001 A Space Odyssey and was looking for ideas for his next movie, where he discovered the Dream Story novella and thought that it would make a great movie, so he bought the rights to the story. As the 1970s took off, so did Kubrick's ideas, where he envisioned Eyes Wide Shut to be a wacky sex comedy with, quote, a wild and sombre streak running through it. His main choices for the Dr. Bill characters were either Steve Martin or Woody Allen. And even as the 1980s came along, Kubrick still saw Eyes Wide Shut as a potential wacky comedy. And at this stage, he had other actors in mind to play the lead, including Tom Hanks, Bill Murray, and Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> wow, just imagine Bill Murray stumbling into a weird satanic cult-like masked sex party. That might just have been the greatest thing I had ever seen, but it didn't happen. What? Can't a guy just wear a big gold nose on a Tuesday afternoon anymore? <laughs> Number 7. Another real-life couple were considered for Eyes Wide Shut. So at some stage, the production of Eyes Wide Shut had completely shut down. But the ball seemed to get rolling again in 1994, where Kubrick returned to the production and the structure of the story had completely changed, where it took on the form of a psychological thriller. And the story was no longer set in early 20th century Vienna, but modern day New York. Well, New York City 1999. Warner Brothers greenlit the production on the account that Kubrick would cast a big time movie star. Apparently Kubrick was keen to cast a real life married couple, and originally wanted to cast Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger in the roles, but... That didn't end up happening. Now, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were a Hollywood power couple at that time, and they were both in England as Kidman was filming the movie The Portrait of a Lady. Cruise and Kidman were invited to visit Kubrick's estate in England in order for Kubrick to talk to them about Eyes Wide Shut. And as Wikipedia puts it, the director awarded them the roles. As in, roles, not roles. Although I'm sure there were nice dinner roles that night. They accepted and were cast as Bill and Alice Harford, and a condition for them starring in the movie is that they weren't to star in any other movie while making Eyes Wide Shut. Although there are claims that that wasn't necessarily the case, they just had to be ready on standby to leave whatever production they were working on to go back to do more filming on Eyes Wide Shut. Kubrick also saw the Bill character as being a sort of Harrison Ford kind of guy. So much so, the character's last name of Harford is a shortened down version of Harrison Ford. I know, crazy right? Number six, two actors left the production. In addition to Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, Eyes Wide Shut starred two other big actors who were big at that time, including Harvey Keitel, who was cast as Bill's friend, slash patient, slash mask ball attendee, Victor Zegler, and Jennifer Jason Lee as Marion Nathanson, the daughter of one of Bill's patients who dies. However, Lee and Keitel had to leave the production due to filming conflicts, as they had other projects that they were starring in at the time. So Keitel was replaced by Sidney Pollack, and Lee was replaced by Swedish actress Marie Richardson. However, it seems that there is more to Keitel's exiting Eyes Wide Shut other than he had to star in other projects. Apparently, he just could not work with Stanley Kubrick's eccentric style of filmmaking and frequent filming of retakes, of which had become legendary when discussing the director. What seemed to break Keitel when it came to filming was a scene where Keitel, as Ziegler, just had to simply walk through a door. That was it, just walk through a door. But Kubrick didn't like the way that Keitel was walking, so he made him do it again, and again, and again. All up, Harvey Keitel had to walk through the door 68 times. Yeah, 68 times. Till Keitel just lost it and said, quote, I'm out of here, you're fucking crazy. And just like that, he was gone, never to look back. <laughs> you can't really blame the guy. 
Even Keitel's replacement, Sidney Pollock, would really struggle with the constant reshoots of scenes. I mean, everyone did. Number five, New York, located in London. So given the fact that not only is Eyes Wide Shut set in New York City, but the city itself actually plays an integral role within the story. It'll make sense for the movie to be shot on location at New York City. Except it wasn't. Kubrick supposedly had a fear of flying, so he insisted that Eyes Wide Shut be filmed in England, as was the case with his last batch of movies. This meant that actual New York City streets, particularly Greenwich Village, would have to be recreated on a back lot at Pinewood Studios, which is located near London and is famous for being the filming location for the James Bond movies. Kubrick would even send crew members to the real Manhattan in order to get street measurements and other tiny details like where newspaper vending machines are located. Some shots were even accomplished by using rear projection in order to project New York City into the background. Now when I first saw Eyes Wide Shut, I didn't really notice that the streets were New York, but then again, I've never been there. Nor did I have any idea that this wasn't a real city street, but in fact a movie set. But I have heard some people say that the New York sets are something of a letdown, as they don't really capture the look, or feel, or essence of New York City. Number 4. The shoot was a nightmare. Now, the recreation of New York in London was only a minor issue compared to Kubrick's knack of making multiple takes. It is notoriously known that Kubrick would make many, many, many retakes and reshoots over and over again to the point where what would otherwise be a brief moment can take an entire day or even longer to shoot. It is said that Kubrick would make his actors do so many retakes, it'll get to the stage where they were both physically and mentally drained and exhausted. I mean, just look at the behind the scenes of The Shining, a shoot that gave actress Shelley Duvall a nervous breakdown. I mean, heck, just look at what happened with Harvey Keitel during the actual shooting of Eyes Wide Shut. Simply put, Kubrick would call action and shoot the take, but that would never be good enough as he would then call action and shoot again, then action and shoot again, then action and shoot again, then action and shoot again and so on and so forth, you get the idea. So you can really see how his perfectionism and shooting style would leave his actors to the brink of madness, almost making the process like an endurance test. Some people have even claimed that he did this on purpose to get them in this desperate state in order to get the required acting performances that he wanted. He wanted his actors to behave a little off and a bit surreal. And supposedly the mood while making Eyes Wide Shut was really low and that people just weren't happy. Vanessa Shaw, who played the street lady who Bill was tempted by, was originally hired for just two weeks of filming but ended up staying on board for two months. The shoot of the movie itself lasted over 15 months, with it consisting of 46 weeks, with the shoot starting in 1996 and wrapping up in 1998, and it even made it to the Guinness World Records as the longest movie shoot. In fact, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman's family were in the UK for so long, they ended up having to buy a house there. Yeah, look, I said this in my Shining video, but... As much as I love Stanley Kubrick movies, I think that if I was an actor back in the day, I really would not have wanted to star in one of his movies or work with him. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but get this, it gets worse. Number three, then Stanley Kubrick died. Wow, we talk about how chaotic the shoot for Apocalypse Now was, but I think Eyes Wide Shut is a fine candidate for being just as chaotic as that. I mean, at least Francis Ford Coppola, the director of Apocalypse Now, came out alive. So basically, the shoot for Eyes Wide Shut was complete, and Kubrick had started to work on the movie's post-production process. You know, editing, colour process, shit like that. 
Supposedly on the 1st of March 1999, Kubrick showed an early cut of the movie to its leading cast of Cruz and Kidman and some Warner Brothers executives. And then sadly, he passed away just six days later. He was 70 years old and died of a heart attack in his sleep. And just like that, one of the most effective, innovative and brilliant filmmakers of all time was now no more. Say what you want to say about Kubrick. He was a master of his craft and made some truly memorable films, of which are still being analysed even to this day. However, the controversy doesn't stop there, as many believe that Eyes Wide Shut is an incomplete film and that Kubrick always worked on every tiny details of his movies right till the very end of their production and that he didn't get to do that with Eyes Wide Shut. Furthermore, it's discussed that the studio took charge of Eyes Wide Shut and, you know, sort of created their own cut as they saw fit. One that maybe, possibly didn't entirely align with Kubrick's vision. But, I just want to stress these are just rumours and theories, but they do persist. Look, there are all sorts of stories and theories out there. Warner Brothers themselves claim that Kubrick actually did hand in the final cut of the film, so his original vision is out there, minus a few little tweaks and changes that still had to be made. Whereas there are other claims that it's not the cut of his original vision. Ali Ermi, who starred in Full Metal Jacket, claimed that Kubrick called him shortly before he died and told him how much he hated Eyes Wide Shut and how it's a terrible movie and that he essentially gave in to Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman and that the critics are going to savage him. But then Kubrick's friend, Todd Field, who actually starred in the movie as Nick Nightingale, retaliated to those claims by saying that Kubrick was, quote, absolutely thrilled with the film and that what Ermi said was a load of old rubbish. You know, just a bunch of old cobblers. Look, who knows, at this stage, it's all just hearsay. Number two, the movie in post. So there is an ongoing debate as to whether or not the final film of Eyes Wide Shut is Kubrick's original vision or if in fact there was studio interference. However, one thing that does seem to have occurred during the post-production phase revolves around the controversial masked party scene. This sequence, as presented in the film, was heavily criticised, as Warner Brothers would digitally alter the picture in order to hide more explicit visuals, in order to avoid an NC-17 rating, and to get the desired R rating, where they sort of, you know, digitally added in objects, in order to conceal what's going on. Many felt that this went against Kubrick's vision, one of those even being critic Roger Ebert, who felt that this digital altering censorship had turned this R-rated cut of Eyes Wide Shut into Eyes Wide Shut, the Austin Powers version. Look, I can see it from both perspectives. There are those who feel that Kubrick's vision is sacred and must be kept intact, especially considering this was the movie he made when he passed away. But at the same time, Warner Brothers is a business. Its goal is making money, in which movies rated NC-17 rarely do. And it's very common that movies do get cut down in order to avoid NC-17 ratings. But that said, ideally, you do want Kubrick's vision left intact, so it's a tricky one, I don't have any answers here. <laughs> Speaking of adding in post, the lady at the masked ball who seemingly sacrifices herself to save the Bill character, who may or may not have been murdered by the Illuminati, was actually voiced by Kate Blanchett, as the actress who played the part, Abigail Good, couldn't do an American accent. So, Kate Blanchett to the rescue, <laughs> I guess. Number 1. Eyes Wide Open Nicole Kidman would go on to call the release of Eyes Wide Shut as, quote, dark and strange, because not only was it released just a few months after the death of Stanley Kubrick, but the very day it was released in the States, July 16th, 1999, was the very same day that JFK Jr. had died in a plane crash, along with his wife and her sister. Very strange and unfortunate timing indeed. Eyes Wide Shut made just over $162 million on a $65 million budget, and it was Kubrick's second highest grossing movie to be released in the States after 2001 A Space Odyssey. However, despite being on top of the charts in both the US and the UK, it was still felt that Eyes Wide Shut didn't quite make as much as anticipated. But it is also stated that it did perform better in other parts of the world. 
Eyes Wide Shut generally got positive reviews from critics. There were many praises that this may be one of Kubrick's greatest movies, or at least even his greatest movie. It did get some criticisms though, but not for the reasons that you think it did, as some critics actually thought that the orgy scene was actually quite tame. There were other complaints that the movie was too long and drawn out and too confusing. Now I wonder if the movie would have fared better with the general public if it was edited down. Now what I mean by this is that there are scenes of characters walking around, thinking, processing things, and getting lost within their environment while they process everything that is happening around them, particularly with Tom Cruise's Bill character, where you see every single solitary second of this. Now, an avid Stanley Kubrick fan would tell you, no, this is how it's meant to be. When we see scenes of Bill processing things or walking around or even just sitting around thinking, we're getting into the character, so to speak, and seeing the gears tinker away in his mind, the mechanics of him processing events. And look, I'm actually on board with the Kubrick fan base. I agree. We don't just observe the character, but literally kind of spend every minute with him. But maybe to someone who isn't a Kubrick fan, who has come into this movie fresh, may be confused by these long scenes and find them unnecessary and boring. But you know, this is just a theory, and I'm glad that Kubrick's vision wasn't tinkered with. Well, at least any more than it already may or may not have been. The way I see it, Kubrick didn't just make movies, he made weird and surreal experiences and puzzles. Experiences and puzzles that you just can't take at face value the first time you watch them, and that you have to go back and experience them several times to fully get emerged into the worlds that Kubrick tried to create, and then try and figure out what he was trying to say. He didn't just spell things out for us, the viewer. He was an artist who would craft an art piece and would put hints and clues into why he would make this piece of work and what it all means. And that's why Kubrick's films were almost always shrugged off upon their releases, but in later years would also be hailed as masterpieces. And Eyes Wide Shut is no exception. It's another wonderful and thought-provoking art piece of Kubrick, his final one that he left behind. It's visually intoxicating while also being haunting and disturbing as you fully find yourself emerged in this weird tale that Kubrick is trying to tell you. So Eyes Wide Shut was the final curtain call for a truly brilliant movie director. And because of that, it might just be one of his most important movies. So that was my exploration into Eyes Wide Shut. It may have taken an insane amount of takes to get there, but they finally got there. It's the perfect movie to watch if you've got two hours and 40 minutes to spare and want to go down a rabbit hole of sex fantasy weirdness. With an extra dash of the Illuminati thrown in for good measure. Anyway, I'm Minty, and when you think about it, Eyes Wide Shut is probably the most outrageous Christmas movie ever. (laughs) This one is definitely on the naughty list. See ya!